I think music allowed me to integrate with this country, to integrate with this new culture that I adapted and I talked to. I was really interested in jazz because I felt that it was like a connection, and there were like a strong connection with the Arabic music and African music. Even when I speak Arabic, people say, oh, you have an accent. And when I speak English, they said, you have an accent. But I tell them when I draw, I have no accent. Major funding for Arab American Stories was provided by Mohammed and Jamie El Arian, the Arab American Community of Michigan, the Arab American Community of Houston, Texas, the American Syrian Arab Cultural Association of Michigan. Additional funding was provided by These artists have all found new expression in their work by coming to America. Oud player and composer Rahim al Haj fled Iraq for political reasons. Now he fuses Middle Eastern and Western influences together in his music. Malika Zara was born in Morocco, grew up in France, and found a creative home in New York's multicultural music scene. And Detroit artist Adnan Sharara explores the idea of identity personally and cosmically in his painting and sculpture. Virtuoso oud player and composer Rahim El Haj explores both Eastern and Western musical traditions in an innovative contemporary style all his own. Home visions for me is connect to my childhood because uh, in Iraq culture we, we, we care about home visions. And being in the United States for over more than 12 years and always I have searched for home. Having home and vision in my home is always a reminder for me that I have a home. Because home pigeons, you fly them, and then no matter what, they can come back. Ready? So first, start now. My first time when I introduced to the Oud was um, in elementary school. Fascinated by the sound of it, and, and I was just like, uh, it was uh, amazed, and I felt like this is this is it, this is my life, and 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 I have to to continue with it. My father didn't support us so much, except my mom. She was really supportive me. She said, "Could you please not to give him a hard time, because." He will be the best other player in the world, period. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rahim al Haj and the Little Earth Orchestra. <laughs> get to my adulthood, I became involved with politics in Iraq. And so I started composing music uh, criticizing the Iran-Iraq war. One 
of the piece he was very well known in Iraq, it's called Why, and it becomes a really very famous uh, song in Iraq, and people they start singing it in, in the street, and, you know, in schools, and and that's why it became necessary necessary for me to escape Iraq because I'm Iraqi working with the uh, against the Iraqis. Uh, government. When I came to the United States, you know, I don't speak English. I think music allowed me to integrate with this country, to integrate with this new culture that's adapted and I talked to and I immersed to it. I have a beautiful memory here. I mean, that's what I started my life uh, uh, again as a musician in this place. This is Tamagrano. Hey, I like all I remember you. Yeah, it's This is my, my place that I hang out all the time and I'm proud being part of this place. The street was blocked here because there was a protest at the university. We're just two blocks from the university. It was a protest against the war. So Rahim couldn't get here, because they had the street blocked off. Uh, and everybody it. had to, um, you know, really work hard to, to, to get to the place, and the place was filled. So I started record in the studio, and I produced my first CD called The Second Baghdad. And it became really known in, in the United States. And after that, in 2005, Smithsonian contacted me to do a record for them. Then I went there to record my record with them. It's called When the Soul Settled, the Music of Iraq. Usually I get my inspiration of music from stories from family and from friends and from people that are uh, living in, inside of, of Iraq and they tell me this story and I just write it down and then I have a story every time I go and perform. And I made difference a lot by making feel people different about Arab, how they look to the Arab differently. And in specific with the music uh, particularly because Whatever I performed, they came to me and said, you know, that's, I've never heard Oud before, but this is the beautiful. And when they hear the story also, they make a huge difference. Because all of us, we are here in different backgrounds, in different uh, culture, in different language, and in different color. And together, we make a beautiful picture of it, to make peace, to be compassionate, and make music to make people think that, you know what, it's beautiful to live together. I was the first Arabic musician entirely. And I was actually, when I remember, nominated for a Grammy Award. So it was a big deal. Finally, Arabic musician arrived too. So by combining my culture to other culture is, is to make the music more powerful, actually. To make it more accessible. It's merging culture is something really good. It's not about the individual and that's to keep your culture alive. Maybe we are different culture and different color and different background. Politics always divide us, but music always bring us together, no matter what. Malika Zara's musical home is New York City, where her improvisational spirit and rich musical roots blend seamlessly with New York's jazz scene. Hello, I'm Malika Zara. I'm 
My music is a blend of North African traditional music with jazz harmonies. So Berber Taxi is a traditional song that my mother used to sing. It's in a Berber language or Amazir language. It's about a young person who lives in an isolated place and she calls out her love through a taxi driver. <laughs> I was born in, in Morocco, in a little uh, town uh, called Oulet Teima, and it's uh, between Agadir and Taroudant. When I was a little girl, I immigrated to France. I'm really um, uh, grateful to my parents because I can see really clearly that how much the effort that they had to put, you know, to leave their own country and their family and go to Europe from North Africa because it was really another world. And in France, there were a lot of racism and ignorance about the culture of, uh, of, of the others. Growing up in Arabic family, we had like parties and there were people coming from different parts of the world and each person bring his own food and music etc. And all this misunderstanding uh, of, um, of the other disappeared. So I was really, since I was a little girl, I really understood clearly that art is an amazing tool for peace. At home, uh, my mother was listening a lot of traditional music, and then we were listening the radio, so all the the American hits and funky stuff because at home we like dancing, you know. And then I wanted to study really music more. I, I went to the conservatory when I started the singing, but I didn't like it. Uh, I felt that it was like too much, um, too far from my culture. And I was looking for something that helped me to open more. And so I went to a jazz school and uh, I was really interested in jazz because I felt that it was like a connection and there were like a strong connection with the Arabic music and African music since it has this improvisation. As a profession, it's it's really it's really hard, and it's even harder for girls uh, because I think also that um, uh, parents are more scared for the girls because they know that it's a tough uh, work, tough job, and uh, they're scared to see their their kids and especially their daughters in in that uh, environment. So yes, my parents and especially my mother, uh, it was really really tough for her but uh, I did it many times many years uh, hiding <laughs> after a while my mother started uh, finding out and then it was like a, a big war <laughs> and um, after a few years she sees that you know I didn't become like crazy and um, I still the same and you know so thank you thank you, thank you so much and the next one is called Tanazir and it's a tribute to women and it's in Amazir language or Berber language. <laughs> Then in 96, I was living in the south of France and uh, I didn't have any more attachment to anything. So I said, look, you know, Malika, this is a good period for you to go and see the jazz Mecca, which is New York. And it was now. <laughs> the things that I really love in New York that really inspire me, it's there's so many competitions, so many amazing artists coming from all over the world and it's constantly moving and it's really refreshing and meeting all these new people and it pushes you to overcome yourself 
you always have to work hard because yeah, one day you can be something and the other day uh, you know you can be nothing because there's always new things coming up. And uh, and I was so charmed, very very charmed. So this is going to be the last song, and I wanted to introduce you this fabulous musician with who I had the great pleasure to play with since I moved here. I enjoy very much working with Malika. It brings us to very different band configurations depending on the places we play. Sometimes we have a Moroccan percussion player, sometimes we have drummers, sometimes we have no drummers, sometimes we have a piano player. And the sound is very flexible, but it always stays with her energy, which is great to experiment in different situations with different crowds. Her style, you don't see it every day. It's something very unique. I learned so much, you know, by playing with Malika. I'm from Suriname, South America, and the accents are similar to uh, Moroccan music, but with melodies and bass lines and like those other percussion, it gets a whole different character. I like a challenge, so I'm having fun doing it. <laughs> the way she sings, it's not a traditional music, you know. It's, it's her vision of her tradition. I really respect and, and, and love the way she uses her voice in the music and I try to serve the music, you know, as the best I can. The more I play music, the more I meet people and more I realize that at some point we all are connected to each other and through music this is what I, um, what I experiment more and more and I think it's really beautiful. Adnan Chirara has loved drawing since he was a child. You know, how quickly when you were a kid, you know, the first time you grab that pencil and you just express yourself and you just wanted to draw and, and show this uh, emotion and, and, and your feeling. He grew up in Lebanon and Sierra Leone and came to the United States for college. I came to the U.S at the age of 19 and to study architecture and city planning but, and uh, knowingly that I wanted to be an artist. His vast studio is a repository of his art and the materials of his art, bound objects which inspire his playful exploration of identity. When I speak Arabic people say, oh you have an accent. And when I speak English they said you have an accent. But I tell them when I draw I have no accent. You know, and, uh, and I feel art is a universal language. And, and that's what I try to also draw in my art. You know, like a guy with a big nose or a square body or something. It symbolizes everybody. It doesn't matter where you come from, what color it is, or, or uh, you know, we all have feelings. We all have the same tears. We all have the same laughters and happiness. But I have a purpose with my art. I'm not trying to tell them, oh, no, change your mind or something. Just look and find your way. I studied architecture and but I knew I always wanted to be an artist and I did this thing it's the same thing as like this is the hammer that wanted to be a conductor, it wanted to be a musician. Oh you see this is to me as the immigrant coming to America. I came with my knowledge with uh, everything to better my knowledge but also to give After uh, living in um, uh, Michigan for about uh, now 14 years, I definitely felt that this is the place I have to be. As an Arab American, I feel this is my home, my my place where I can create something new to add, uh, you know, to the fabric and make it a tighter fabric, a better fabric, more colorful. To be an Arab American, 
you know, I have a base that uh, I can tap into and it's endlessly to have a great culture and everything and, uh, and I can give something good. It's about to show people that don't be afraid to say who you are because you're only lying to yourself. All my life I wanted to be an artist and I am an artist and I always be an artist and, and I want to create a, a studio where I can interact with others and also I very well connected with uh, Detroit and I feel with the industrial, with the struggle. Just like my found objects that the things I create, I felt that uh, people use those tools and they, they think that they don't have any more use for it because something new is in, in the market or things like that and then I give them this whole new rebirth. So and I, I felt that's what Detroit is. It's uh, uh, you could be an artist and you can voice your own voice. Um, I just found these uh, recently in an estate sale and uh, as soon as I picked them up, I, I could see like, you know, a man screaming. Uh, but that's like at the beginning, both of them, like these two old men that have been tired sitting in a box and waiting for so long for somebody to come and pick them up. And, uh, and I was so excited to get them. These are the starting po point. I mean, this is a world I try to create. Here, as you can see, the melancholy hammer that uh, I built from found objects. And it, uh, although itself is, uh, it, it's very, uh, effective to show uh, what I'm trying to portray uh, but it wasn't enough for me I wanted to create the character and show the character in a in a much more deeper and heavier meaning so I don't know what it, it it takes me this is just a beginning a beginning of putting something together and and forming an identity a new identity uh, but yet it was taken from a past. And I feel like these things uh, were gonna be thrown out. And same thing like also an immigrant, you know, like he comes first to a country, whether they run away from war or they run away because of c certain political turmoil or whatever it is, or coming for education or something they end up taking the harder jobs, they end up moving forward and they, and they grow and they give something. So, and that's the same thing. I had to like take these objects and build them up and now they, I have a character and from this character I can draw them or they become a monumental sculptures. This is a, an identity thing. It's, a, it's a, me creating a, the subject and yet giving it a chance and looking at it in many, many different angles and, and working with it and, and build on it. So it's all coming from the self and, and from seeing things around and, and translate and retranslate it so people, the audience can look at it in a whole new way. Most important thing I find out is like you cannot hide behind your finger. You are, you are who you are. And <laughs> my wife always tells me, what's that mean? I said, well, you know, you really cannot hide behind your figure. And that's the, the truth. You just uh, be yourself, be truly yourself, because you live within yourself. And, you know, be proud of who you are, because that's when you're going to give truly the most. And, and that, once I recognized that more, I realized how quickly uh, I form an identity, how quickly I, I started to be myself and, and something new. And that's really what I want to show people that no matter where they come from, um, to don't give up and uh, to keep seeking and looking because life is so beautiful.
I am Netta Ulavi. Hope to see you next week for more Arab American stories. Major funding for Arab American Stories was provided by Mohammed and Jamie El Arian, the Arab American Community of Michigan, the Arab American Community of Houston, Texas, the American Syrian Arab Cultural Association of Michigan. Additional funding was provided by 